I'd just like to play this clip yeah. and get your reaction to this clip. And you tell me what you think statements like this from the former CIA director, how they affected the conversation around these issues. Why won't the president Thank you, confront Mr. Vladimir Putin? Why won't he read the cards and say the things that you say need to be said to Vladimir Putin? Do you believe he's somehow in debt to the president of Russia? I think he's afraid of the president of Russia. Why? Um, well, I think one can speculate as to why, uh, that the Russians may have something on him personally, uh, that they could always roll out and make his life more difficult. I, I have two reactions, and I, I will get to the disinformation thing in a second. But the first thing I'll say to come back to the question of the ruling party is that the the sort of tricked understanding how the ruling party operates in America is that it is because it is uh, run by the perhaps the most untalented, incompetent group of people ever assembled in the country's history that they have insisted on such a um, insisted on these coercive and monopolistic tactics for controlling the government. I, I mean, I think Brennan is a um, by, by the, the sort of the standard measures of what you would expect from the nation's intelligence chief, phenomenally untalented and unaccomplished where he has excelled is as a party hack, you know, as a, as a, a Soviet or, or Chinese style party hack. And the claim that he is making there, which is that Donald Trump is controlled by or indebted to, or, or somehow under the thumb of Vladimir Putin, and therefore by extension, the Russian security services, is a claim that he is in many senses singularly responsible for entering into the official record of American politics when in one of his last acts as CIA chief, um, he basically uh, singularly orchestrated what was known as the ICA, the Intelligence Community Assessment. So this was the, I believe it came out in January 2017, but it was the first, the seminal uh, Intelligence Community Assessment, which declared that not only did Putin interfere in the 2016 election, but that he had a preference for Donald Trump. What we later found out through classified House testimony um, that, you know, uh, people who had been privy to it uh, spoke about was that rather than being a uh, a statement on representing the opinion of the 17 different intelligence agencies, which is what an ICA is supposed to be, a consensus statement, in other words, that in fact, Brennan himself had handpicked a group of analysts and had personally uh, led the drafting of the ICA that declared that Putin had a preference for Trump and that in doing so, he had excluded the analysis from Russia experts who not only didn't find that credible, but who said that, no, in fact, as Russia experts, they had found that Putin's preference was actually for Hillary Clinton because uh, Putin considered her the more predictable candidate, not that there was any nefarious relationship with Clinton, but simply that in ways that are quite easy to understand that he he wanted the sort of stock neoliberal candidate because he could guess what move she was going to make. And so that that was Brennan's doing. Um, Brennan, you know, the fact that he left the CIA to immediately become a MSNBC analyst tells you a lot both about Brennan and about MSNBC and the relationship between the media and the intelligence agencies. And the media here is simply providing the amplification system um, for narratives that are originating elsewhere. You know, that's why I, I talk about the weakness of the media in relation to these other members of the counter disinformation complex, not because the media doesn't play a critical role in amplifying and enforcing these narratives, but because it doesn't generate these narratives on its own. And therefore, it's not in charge of their final direction and orientation. If so I when, may, when you... uh, just I, I would like to point out that Morning Joe is kind of like the Max's Kansas City or the Studio 54 of the ruling party, right? This is it's you know not accidental that this happened and on MSNBC and on NBC News and things like that. So when you are <clears throat> when you observe this fact pattern uh, around John Brennan and see that he discarded certain information and privileged other information is is making these very 
pointed, well, not pointed, but let's say very broad speculation on national television is your analysis that this is a kind of tunnel vision um, that he can he he believes this or that this actually is something more nefarious that this is that it that he's trying to actually be a disinformation purveyor well two things so one i would never accuse somebody of being a disinformation purveyor because i don't use the term in that way i think the term is deliberately obscuritanist and it's an espionage term and i'm i'm not in the business of espionage so i'm not accusing anybody of disinformation i think i think they get things wrong or they get them right um I, look, I don't see any reason to try and impute motive here. I think that the the facts of the case speak for themselves. What we know about the crafting of the ICA is that Brennan omitted contrary analysis, and fa- you should people should go back and read that ICA from 2017. When I when I talk about how untalented he is you know i think sometimes the documents speak louder than these characterizations go read the ica it it establishes nothing it proves nothing it's not well argued it has a 12 page appendix drawing on russia today articles from 2012 it's like a a shoddy nomenclatura kind of document that is a sort of placeholder brennan's willingness to or or interest in transitioning from the cia to talking head on on msnbc to signatory to the false national security official document claiming that the Hunter Biden laptops were disinformation um, speaks for itself. That was Reason's live stream with Jacob Siegel. If you liked it and want to hear the whole thing, go here. If you want to listen to another excerpt, go here and come back every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time for Zach Weismuller and I's Reason live stream.